Okay, we know we have a bad history with these reviews, but before we go any further, we promise we're actually going to be doing better this time, alright guys? So, please, don't turn off the video. I like how you said, right guys, didn't give us a chance to reply. Right guys? <laughs> oh boy, this is a great start. Right, as in I thought he said right guys. Audience. This is a great start. <laughs> Hey, uh, we're back with Story Fandom, um, and we are actually more... Sorry, the dog was... Licking his touche. Yeah. Anyway, we are promising that we are going to be more focused a little bit this time and actually have things to say instead of just kind of... devolving. Um, anyway, so we just... We watched a while ago of uh, Ruby, volume, volume 7, episode 4. We watched it Saturday. It is now Thursday. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Well, happy Turkey Day. Well, you know, even if you're not American. PC, happy Turkey Day. True. Even if you're not American, there's still things to be grateful for. Just don't think too hard about it. <laughs> About the, uh, the holiday. Okay. Um, anyway, so we're here to talk about the episode. We actually have talking points this time. And uh, we'll actually... This is why you guys shouldn't play with the fluff and the dog. She let him take so, it. So, just leave it. Okay. It's fluff. Oh my god. Then you should have picked it up and thrown it away earlier. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started with the first thing we want to talk about is... Uh, was something you wanted to talk about, sweetie, or upset yeah. you a lot. I thought you would say it, and then we would just go. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about the uh, the Aesops and their whole mentality of they aren't friends. They just work together. And they just trust each other, and that's it. Like, yeah. I wouldn't trust people to keep me alive that I wasn't a friend with, I guess. I don't know. You would never be in a situation where there'd be someone you worked with and you respected, no. but you just didn't really want to hang out with outside of work. No. Hmm. And that's kind of shitty. You spend all that time with these people, and you don't even freaking like them. Like, well, I actually wonder what? if that's if that's everyone in their group's mentality. Even if it's not, even if it's just like one or two of them, that's still really shitty. Well, I can, and I probably just let them die. I'd be like, oh, so Whoa. we ain't friends now. <laughs> you heard that? I... Mm. Well, obviously that's Harriet's position. Like. And I could see that being um, Clover's position as well. But I don't know, Mero just seems like such a giant dork that he totally thinks they're all his friends. I, <laughs> I don't think I could so. see. You don't think... I could see... No, not Mero. The other dude. The old dude. Well, thinking like that. What, that they're all his friends? No. no, that they're not. Oh, no, but I'm saying I see... Stretchy dude. He's saying Marrow, the one with the tail. Is the one who I think would think everyone is his friend. You yeah, think I'm... they all like him, they're all his friend. Yeah, and I'm saying I, mean... I think the old dude would be another one who doesn't think like that. I don't know, because I almost see Vine, which is the old dude, and Elm, which is the big chick. They're sort of, like, supposed to be parallels to... Um, Nora and Ren. They're too condescending. I feel like they would just condescend yeah. to each other until one of them will punch the other in the face. I don't think so. I don't think they yeah, think they're being I'd condescending. I'd maybe Elm, but not Vine. Yeah, Vine does not seem like a warm person. Well, I'm not necessarily saying he's warm, but I, I don't know. If they are parallels to, to Ren and Nora, they might be in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, is a going theory I've heard. Yeah. Is that they're supposed to be like a. But he's so. Kind of like. <laughs> Do you but, think that stretches? <laughs> Probably. Oh. But How that. How flaccid would that be? <laughs> oh. Okay, that's not being funny. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sorry. I just put that out there, and now but, everyone is thinking but that, that's it. The, You're all thinking it. 
that's the idea is, is that you know maybe they're supposed to kind of show because clearly Nora was going to that mission like hey Ren you look great and Ren's just like we're in the middle of a mission leave me alone and so she got all hurt and Jean tried to make it better and just pissed Nora off more I like your outfit <laughs> yeah so maybe they're supposed to maybe some the theory I've heard from a couple places has been that they're going to show them how to become a better fit for a relationship, balancing both dating and Ugh. fighting in missions. I really hope not. In terms of personalities, they definitely match up. I don't need to see that guy in a relationship with anybody. But I mean, okay, but can we at least not even him? himself? <laughs> like, he just needs to not. But we can all admit that they are, in terms of personality, condescending or not, she's all like, this is my favorite part. And he's all like, she meant that as a compliment. They are like Ren and Nora in the way they speak and act. I don't think Ren is completely like that. No, but Nora is not. I still like Ren way better than that guy. Mm -hmm. So. Ren is much more likable. Yep. Dude, she's old he's like, and creepy. He looks like the Walking Dead. It's like Skeletor. Mm. <laughs> Why'd you go from Walking Dead to Skeletor? They're both creepy. Doesn't matter. Okay. Although, to be fair, with his skin tone, he would light up a room just like Skeletor with his fucking glowing ass skin, basically. Well, glowing ass bones. Yeah. He's like all yellow. That guy's like that freaking fluorescent. <laughs> it's like you just see him and it's like Ugh. Did you say that about me? Are you trying to say that I <laughs> look like no, him? No, he's got that skinny face though too where it looks like he was just like sucked dry. Mm. I don't No, let's can we move on? Okay. Now I'm just thinking it. So, anything else? What are your opinions on the uh, Aesops? There, I about? hate them. I I don't like the Aesops at all. I really don't like Clover. Oh my god! Why? Because he's just too he's smug. Not smug. He is smug. He's not smug. That's in your head. Crows are like my well, my siblings brings misfortune. He's like, well, then you're in luck. He didn't my say it like that. Brings fortune. My siblings brings fortune. My <laughs> Hey, hey, that ship exists, so you're trying to be all flamboyant, but it could totally be the truth. But that's not what he said it like. He was just like. Well, I don't like him. We're a good team, buddy, pal. You did not say it like that either. But he didn't say it the way you said it. My siblings. He said it closer to the way I said it than the way you said it. He's all Joe from freaking gift wrap. Anyway. So. If we have nothing else to say about our opinion on the Aesop. The next no, just that we hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so you say you hate the Ace House, but at the same we time you're need... like, I don't hate Clover. <laughs> Shut up. We need, like, Ruby and Junior, or Orange, or whatever, need to, like, rub off on them. Ruby not Junior? Not the other way around. That's what I've been calling them, Ruby Junior. They're not Ruby Junior. Yes, Ruby that's, Jr. The, that's the whole team in Ruby Junior. <laughs> Guest star <laughs> and Crow and Oscar. Guess they're not in the actual team, but they're there a lot. <gasps> Ruby Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ruby Jr. But before, like, when you started, like, coming up with it, yeah, you were like, it was like, Ruby Jr. <laughs> and it wasn't even Ruby Jr. at first. What was it? No, I think it was. No, it was like Ruby. I even have a good anyway. rationale for it now. Oh my god. Ruby Nerds. Ruby 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 My rationale being that, and this is entirely your fault I have this, by the way, Miss, I'm going to put on Gilmore the Merrier for the last three weeks. It's only been on since Monday. Gilmore Girl's been on this house every single day. 
If Lorelai will name her daughter, girls, girl, what's your problem? If Lorelai will name right? her daughter after her, so basically Rory is Lorelai Junior, called Lorelai the Third. Isn't the grandma to name that? Yeah. Then I could totally see Ruby naming her children after herself. But right now, the team is her baby. Therefore, <laughs> the team oh is Ruby Junior. Okay, we're moving on. Um, okay, the next talking point we have down here. We hate Jacques. Jacques. When you guys watch our reaction, we get really... <laughs> we don't like Jacques. We get angry with him, and then there's that moment where, like, you can see that, and that at first, when he's focusing on Weiss, he's like, I'm going to punch her. Like, I'm going to slap her again. And then he realizes, because Ironwood speaks up, but he goes, like, I have half a mind to I was like, have mine to do what? He's like, oh, well, that's right, I got people around. Okay, fine. And then he goes for the, the emotional abuse. Which is totally why I think Blake was like, Taking I'm going to hold her hand. Mom. Because Blake is like, Adam abused the crap out of me emotionally. I know how much this sucks. Yeah, like, a lot of people in this house understand that feeling. So we were just like... <sighs> yeah, that was a big collective sigh. Yeah. Like, if we could bring a character out of a TV show, instead of just, like, bringing Team Ruby, which would be awesome, I would bring Jacques just to fucking shank his ass. Like, seriously. Like, that was some bullshit. Like, clearly the mom doesn't give a shit about anyone or anything. You do not have to fucking well, rub it in. Well, see, we don't know be that. an asshole. All we know is the mom is, is a drunk, an alcoholic. We don't know how much she cares or, you know, because people who are alcoholics... What if she's, care. like, actually sitting in a room dead? Remember that one part in Big Bang Theory where he was, like, imagining his mom's oh, dead body in there? You're such a good boy, Howard. You mean the psycho <laughs> yeah. reference? What if that's how it is with the mom? Like, I killed her years ago. <laughs> He's, like, no, just because saying she's Whitley alcoholic. said she was already drinking in the garden. So, I was the kid to see her. Yeah. And I could see her being upset, or I can see her being frustrated, but I also don't think... That's clearly Jacques. Like, you know, we don't know that that's true. We, she could have been upset, but she probably would have just gone and drank more. But she already was doing a ton of, you know, if she was aware Weiss was there or not. Because with... You know, someone who's a kind of alcoholic, especially a rich alcoholic, time is yeah. probably a very fluid sort of thing because you always I have booze. I mean, booze. I'm not an alcoholic, and time is very fluid for me. I can't remember day by day, and I can't remember what happened on which day. So, pfft. so I I could see, like, whoa. I could see her being upset, and I could see her not even being aware of it. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know her at all. We haven't met her yet. But Jacques' whole I don't think thing we ever there. Will. Yeah, I don't think so. But Jacques' whole thing there was clearly a shot to hurt Weiss. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So. And it worked. Mm-hmm. I feel bad that it did. I mean, having an absentee mom like that, I mean, she still loves her and everything, and I feel bad because it's clearly an unrequited love. Like, mm-hmm. She loves her mom, but her mom is too drunk to love anything. Well, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure I believe that. But I think that her mom would definitely be too drunk to show her any love. Look. Alcoholism is a disease. Yes. But just because you're an alcoholic doesn't mean you don't have feelings. No, she could have feelings, but it's not like she shows it. It's not like it's no, out there. No, I, I agree. So, oh, I totally so, agree. Do you think Weiss is sitting there like, she loves me, I know she does, deep down, she just can't show me? Or do you think it's just like, she doesn't love me? I mean, it's a, okay. case, it's a, it's a case by case sort of situation. Okay. Both work. Here's how this goes. I'm going to break it down. Mm-hmm. Okay. When a child has a parent who's depressed, and they try to... That child is going to think to themselves, what did I do wrong? You don't think that Weiss, after all these years, still thinks to herself, 
Why was I not enough for her to not drink? Why am I not enough for her to be here with us? Why am I not enough for her I'm to saying, stop? I'm not saying that she doesn't think these things. So, I'm just saying is we don't know the mom. It's probably a shitty fucking feeling, but she's still... Well, you know? We don't know the mom. So we don't really know Weiss's feelings towards her. I don't know. Because there's... If they write her any different, if we do ever meet her, I will be very upset. Because it... Well, see, here's the thing. I know it's a case-by-case thing, but I also know how but see, Weiss has to possibly feel. Yeah. And Weiss can feel that way. I mean, it's very easy. I think, from what I know of Weiss, the way I would see her feeling would be... She knows, maybe not back then, but she knows by now that she's an adult that it's not her fault her mom drinks, and her mom probably did love her, but that won't make it hurt any less. She'll know on um, a mental level, but on an emotional level, it'll still feel like she doesn't love her. But we won't know until we meet the mom. But clearly... I don't think it's happening anytime soon. If it Yeah. Well, if it happens, it's going to be this volume. Yeah. This well, no, they said we we're going to be in Atlas for probably two volumes. Mm. So it'll either happen this volume or next volume. But once they leave Atlas, that will be it. We're not going to if we haven't met the mom by then, we're not going to meet the mom because after this, we'll probably even head to Vacuo. So there'll be no reason for her mom to show up, not yeah. in terms of the story. Um, but yeah, we did not like Jacques for two volumes. That's what I've heard. They have enough content that they're staying in Atlas for two volumes. This that Ruby is. thing should be above the Jacques Watson Whitley. That should go after Ironwood and somebody should go after that. Okay, well the talking points are already here. I'm not going to rearrange them. I'm we're just, just skip. No, I'm saying when we do talk about it. That's what we should do. Anyway, uh, our next point is just sort of Ironwood. Well, this is more his thing. Well, no, I was just kind of, I want to get your sort of impression of Ironwood, just first of all, in general. He's because, tired. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. It's like... He's so healing it. Ironwood looked like a dictator in the first episode. He's got the giant screens, he's got the, the dictator beard, you know, he's got propaganda everywhere, you know. But now that we're seeing him again, again, I don't know, I'm getting the feeling that... <laughs> the dict beard. <laughs> I think Ironwood, again, is falling prey to what has always seemed to be his character flaw. He doesn't think shit through. He's so wrapped up in preparing for this big, huge, you know, his, his plan that he's not taking care of his base, his people. And so that's why I said in the second episode reaction, when he said, when Yang said, what about what that's costing everyone? And he said, that's a price I'll have to bear. And I said, but you're not the one paying it. Because... With his embargo, Atlas and Mantle are suffering. Especially Mantle. But Ironwood's not. I thought she asked, like, about, what about everyone hating him or whatever? Yeah, something like that. The point is, he was saying, that's my price to bear. But it's the consequences of what he's doing. Yeah. It's not falling on him, it's not, falling on everyone yeah. else. And so he's killing himself. Although kill- he's feeling it, you can tell by the way he is that he's feeling it clearly. I think he's feeling the stress of trying to hold everything together with his paranoia, but he's not feeling the resentment brooding in that in mantle. Which clearly we saw in Elso that Watts and Tyrion are going to take advantage of. Well, yeah, he's not, he's not going to feel her and this is since he lives comfortably up in the clouds and such. Because. Yeah, he's not going to feel it. And we saw that they're killing off people and make Ironwood look bad. Yeah. So they're clearly playing it up. So, um, but I feel like he's he's not. Well, remember in the one Doctor Who episode, he said, I can take you down with. Six little words? Yeah. One word. Then he said, no, wait, no, six. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't she look tired? Four. Four words. Doesn't she look tired? Oh, no, it was six, because it was... He said six, I think it was, don't... Don't you think don't she... Don't you think she looks tired? Yeah. Yeah. So... That's all it takes. All right. it takes is one sentence, one word. And I think... And that spreads like wildfire. 
Why I said that. That is how bad my brain is right now, guys. We're talking about Ironwood being tired and about how he's not paying for the consequences that people are and how he doesn't even think things through. No, but why didn't I make the Doctor Who reference? Because they're killing people to make money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tyrion. That's all it takes. Um, Tyrion. But clearly... They know what's happening. The people down there will know what's happening and that's all it'll take. Yeah, I mean that little could've... bit of unrest added to these rumors that they're all being killed. You know, that's it. Yeah, that's all it's going to take to take them down. Especially on the Jacques who's coming in because clearly Ironwood does not like Jacques. Nobody likes Jacques. Jacques likes Jacques. Jacques needs to get his head checked. But you know. <laughs> And I wonder, like, what was the relationship before this? Because at some point, Jacques and I would must have kind of liked each other. Why? The whole thing about how he says, you know, if you don't forget <laughs> who your friends are. And, you know, at some point, they must have been political allies or something. Maybe Jacques... Maybe out of necessity. Or maybe Jacques got him on into his position or something. I don't yeah, know. I think that's more what it was. Like, but, I got you there. I made you. Like how I told Julius, I made you, I can unmake you. But so... Now you're basically telling people you can kill me. No, I'm just going <laughs> to suck you back into my body. It'll be like some weird, like, I don't know, this alien isn't, thing. This isn't 4chan. Let's not even go there. Um, But yeah, so clearly he does not like... Jacques. I mean, Jacques clearly cares a little bit about people seeing that side of him because he wasn't willing to hit Weiss in front of Ironwood. Yeah, he doesn't want to ruin his reputation or whatever. Well, if he's going to say something like that, then he already has that reputation because everybody already knows what he's going to do. I think that was mostly out of physical... Like, I think if he realized that moment... Because if he had struck Weiss... Everyone, probably Ironwood, but definitely all of the rest of the team, Ruby right there, would have kicked his ass. <laughs> and he would not have been able to stop them. But if he just says something mean, then if they attack him first, it's assault. Yeah. So. Yeah. He didn't assault We White. know. We know how I, how I roll. <laughs> so that's why he backed off that, but. Respect. What? That's how you do. You don't start the fight, but you make sure you finish it. So you... Hold on. Max, stop licking the couch. He was licking his paw. No, he moved onto the couch. Mm. Anyway. um, So, you're saying you have respect for Jacques there, because that would have been Jacques' plan. I I have respect for the plan in general. How about that? Mm Mm-hmm. It just, it makes sense. I'm sorry. Um, when you pick a fight with somebody, make sure you don't well, throw don't the first forget, swing. Jacques is very, that's the difference between Jacques and Ironwood. Ironwood doesn't care about people hating him. Jacques wants to not lose the election. He even said he would have fired all the fondest workers in Mantle if he didn't need their votes to get stay on the council. So... So, um, it's interesting that Jacques, I mean, not Jacques, I know what also likes the girls so much, but we know they're hiding stuff from him. Yeah. Like, he trusts them so much, and I, like, It's like a know. slap in the face. I mean, he got, it is. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like that road band pulling back. Especially because he went as far to get them their I love licenses. Yeah. So, this is going to be. Yeah, that was, that was basically their feeling. They were like. Like, this isn't necessary. You don't have to do that. I I think for the most part, their feeling at first was, oh, that's right, we wanted these. Oh, we've been so busy doing everything. That didn't kick in until they said, I I really need more trustworthy fighters here in Mantle. Like, oh, yeah, we didn't (laughs) tell you about Salem. Or the fact that there's still one more question for Jim. They were Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's used up. 
Well, Even at see, this point, if they had decided to which is it literally to what it would still be said hard. to them. Hmm? Even at this point, like if they decide to reveal the truth themselves by telling them everything, it's still gonna be like a that's slap gonna be one of my yeah. from the beginning, and you're telling me this now. That'll be one of my fights. They are Probably. literally telling him one of the Ozpin lies, which is that Jin and, and, and her and questions it's, and were it's all It's that perfect up. Ozpin lie like, because just technically, like... they did what Ozpin loved to do. I noticed about Ozpin. He would lie when he had to, but he preferred to sort of tell a half truth. So they did. Ozpin told them there were no more questions. So they didn't lie. Ozpin did tell them there were no more questions. They later on discovered there were. But that's not what Ozpin told them. And that's what they told Ironwood. And that's such an Ozpin move. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that's what you should do when you lie to people, I mean. It makes it easier. Because, like, Ruby said that she <laughs> wants to know that they can definitely trust him with all that stuff. But that's also, that was also kind of, like, partially Ozpin's. Well, yeah. Um, but let's be honest, he looked like a dictator when they got there. Yeah. And so. the way they were arrested and everything, I'd be and, like, mm. And which they could maybe use to their advantage. Like, that, if, that, if that comes out and they have a big argument about it, they could use that. Like, you look like a dictator. You arrested us. You fucking us. arrested me, okay? She's like, I didn't know. And then, like, but then you've got that, you sort of start building momentum against them because he gave them back the relic. And yeah. kind of like, well, crap. <laughs> I feel like it's like partially a good thing that we didn't tell him right away and partially hypocritical because of the whole Ospin thing. Yeah. I think it's a we understand why they're doing it but we don't necessarily agree completely because it's kind of like a slap in the face. I think that's Yang's position. Yang doesn't want to be lying. She gets why they're doing it but she really doesn't like it. Neither does Oscar it seems like. Oscar's Oscar completely against him. Yeah. He's like, like he, he does not like it. He's like, I isn't think that he's like what 12. he did to us? He's like twelve. Well, that's what that's what Yang said. They both they're going with what Ruby said. They, I guess they can probably see the point of it, but they don't like it. Weiss is a hundred percent behind Ruby. <laughs> the only one who seems neutral are Crow and Blake. They're just kind of like, okay, whatever, guys. You you guys handle this. Yeah. So then, we also, last thing we were going to talk about, that was an awkward exit. <laughs> the last thing at Ironwood, anyways. Yeah, that was a, alright, girl, big epic speech, trustworthy fighters, we're going to do this, do some good in Mantle. Oh, I, I, have, I, have, I have a mission to run, so. Even Penny was all like, you're getting better, sir. <laughs> so. Your outros are getting my better. My question is, Why? Is he really that so out of touch that he just can't really talk to people outside of, I'm a general giving you orders? Yeah. I think it was that. He's up and in his office just strategizing like, all the time, and he's fucking just isolated himself. Because he didn't trust it's, anybody. Uh, I think it's that. And they had, like, no genuine, like, big reactions to anything. They were just, like, they awkward. They gave no shit. Because, no, they were just, like, awkward and didn't want to say anything, and then... Iron Man was, and everyone was silent, and then Iron Man was just like, because it was like that awkward silence. Yeah, which if it was just that, I could have so seen. That was part part of it. Because the, the thing is weird is Iron Man. Yeah, but then the whole your outros are getting better it tells yeah. us it's not an isolated event. That exactly, like because that and especially we we know Ironwood used to be charming. He used to be charming when he showed up in, in Volume Two and he was in Volume Three. He got the, all of the um, the. Veil council on his side. Everyone seemed super happy. He was there with his fleet. He was flirting with Glenda. You know, he didn't seem to have any problems yeah. with talking to people. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, he was um, um, I'm telling you, he's isolated himself so much. Yeah. It's like insane. Can you imagine doing that? It's like when you take a prisoner and put them in solitary for like months at a time. Even, like, Penny's down there on time. All he has is Winter up there. And Winter ain't no hop on anything. Like, socially. <laughs> Winter's like, I don't know. If you want instruction for Cotillion, I can help you. With all of this 
rabble of stuff. <laughs> I'm a schnee. So, the next thing I think we want to talk about. Which we kind of touched on a little bit. Yeah. Um, was Ruby and Crow's whole conversation in the bleachers. Um, which is probably the most wholesome we've seen Crow in about three volumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not since, like, him talking to Yang after the incident in the semifinals. Yeah. Has he been so supportive? He's had his moments, but I mean, that was like true. I'm telling you, that, uncle. that voice and that outfit is just like. The changing crow. I bet he's sober now. <laughs> they're, they're just like. I that believe I believe that because the end of volume six, you know, when he's talking to Maria in that last scene with on the airship before Ruby and them all freak out about, you know. Oscar is a 14 year old farmhand before that whole scene he goes to pull out his thing and he looks at it and he goes puts it back in his pocket he doesn't drink from it so maybe he is still sober it's possible Mm -hmm. so but they had that entire sort of conversation up there what about you look like you're either bored or falling asleep sorry both probably (laughs) I'm talking (laughs) so um Ruby feeling like an imposter. And that sort of conversation. That was a very wholesome conversation. It was very kind of... I don't know. Unexpected. For me, at least. Coming from Crow after... Crow from Volume 6. I feel bad that everything is always falling on Ruby. Yeah. She needs a vacation. <laughs> or someone needs to, like... I think... Get Zwei for her. He needs to be, like, her fucking support dog. <laughs> Because this is ridiculous. Well, he would be tough enough to survive out there. But Like, she is super young. This is crazy that this all has to fall on her. She's the one who decides they have to lie. She's the one who has to live with that and all the consequences. She's the one who has to feel like crap over it. She's the one who has to decide to go off and, like, try and save everybody. And Yang just stays behind and feels bad for herself. She's the one who has to do everything. Come on, man. I'm just saying. Some buy the girl a cookie. A lot of cookies. God damn it. Yeah, even in certain scenes, it kind of bothers me that they that it's like that. Yeah. Because they're all like, what, like they're two all years older, older than her, than and at it's least. always falling on her. And they're all just it's like, like, bro. They're act like sometimes they all just like act like children, and then, and then Ruby has to be yeah. the one like. Like, remember when they had the apathy thing and she wasn't yeah. being as affected by it as they were? It's like, bro. I just feel really bad for her sometimes. She needs some cookies. <laughs> Give that girl something. Shit. She had A license is Maria's not enough. <laughs> Maria doesn't Whoa. actually run anything though. She's no, just kind of there as like no, but she's so. the one who always who's always like giving tough love to everybody. <laughs> to get Maria in there to yell at them about lying to her to Ruby and get Ruby some cookies. So the other thing they talked about up there was summer. <laughs> she gonna she gonna age fast with all this stuff on her. Man. Ruby, she's yeah. Ruby's gonna age fast. She gonna get that gray hair like I got. I mean, I diet, so like. Sweetie, yeah. and I've I'm seen it. Sweetie, Shut. she's an anime character. I'm just. We're saying. lucky she ages at all. Ash should be like fifty by now, but he's not. Look, I'm just saying. She's she, she gonna be tired. Anyway, they also talked about summer up there. Ironwood aged. Look at him. <laughs> Are you one of the next talking points? She just won't let me. Okay. Also. <laughs> so. Get her cookies. How about the whole thing where Summer was a lot like Ruby down to being a brat? <laughs> and the whole uh, fact that she didn't die on an Oscar mission. Because that was always the, the I know, theory, especially because of. Uh, yeah, but a lot of people had that other theory of how she died. So well, it was either. Uh, it was either Oz permission or fucking crow. 
Well, no, they think Crow did. I think that because obviously that's a big theory. Why that's why Crow drank was because he killed Summer with a semblance by mistake. But clearly, that's not the case. If he wasn't even there, and he clearly doesn't know for sure if she's dead. Yeah, but nobody apparently, knows. Apparently, uh, I heard yeah, according she to went on her own. Miles and Carrie, there's no body in the grave. It's kind of like when your cat leaves and you're like, eh, cat's dead. All right. It ran away. It's dead. Mm. And then it comes back and it's like. Oh, we're doing a back. Gus cool. ref- reference right now. We're doing a Gus reference in the middle of Ruby. Yep. Gus doesn't even it been in Ruby. Although. I'm Gus. Gus. Night. <laughs> Avenge me. Gus. If you want to have a voice Mendoza. in there, like, that's Mendoza. cool. It was Mendoza. Gus. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Joel. No, Joel has a voice in there. It was Mendoza. <laughs> Joel has a voice in there. Never mind. But Gus I'm and just Jeff, saying, like, you guys can do it. They don't you know. know. There's no body. So, she might not be dead. But then she was on a, a first gone. moment. Because the entire thing, Red Like Roses Part 2, there's a lyric, set of lyrics where she talks about, you know, I don't want you to pretty much, I don't know the exact lyrics, but I don't want you to die like me. I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. So people are like, oh my god, she doesn't want Ruby working for Ozpin because she died on an Ozpin mission. Yeah. She ain't died on an Ozpin mission. Though, she could have. Because Ozpin is shady as fuck. Yeah, I mean, I believe it. Um, I mean, she could have before. I mean, I see why that was a common theory. Because he's shady. I don't know. I could see maybe they could find a cool way to bring him back. Yeah, when are they going to bring him back? <laughs> <laughs> Julius like, is like, I already know what's happening, just when? No, not Aspen. I'm, summer. No, I'm talking about Aspen. Yeah, I'm talking about Summer. That. I could see maybe they... If, yeah, if, when if, are they bringing him back? Like, for real, though. If they did it the right way... There is a way to bring Summer back. There's a couple of different ways, but you have to make sure you wrote it correctly. And it might be interesting to see sort of Summer coming to terms with that as she missed all of Ruby's childhood. And, you know, Yang getting pissed off because Summer's back. And at first she's super happy, but then she feels like, well, my mom didn't give a shit about me. And, you know, here's Summer for Ruby. And then have maybe have a binding moment between Yang and... and uh, some are sort of like, you know, Yandu and Quill from, you know, Guards of the Galaxy. Oh, like, Mary Poppins! Not that part. <laughs> no. But that was a better part. Well, the part where he's all like, he may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy boy. The thing where she's like, she may have given birth to you, you but I'm your mom. You can't like that, please. Yandu does it better. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't remember exactly the Yanyu accent. It's like something kind of southern. I will try, but can we just move on? The point is, is that could happen. And then, of course, we're not going to talk about the whole mission thing. Except for, it would be hilarious if Jean is the one who runs into Tyrion or something when he's out with the little kids. <laughs> Maybe he runs into Tyrion and Robin Hill comes and saves him. You so. just want to see yeah, Robin that, that Hill. Robin well, Hill no, she's going to be in the next episode. Whatever, that's not creative. Really? Yeah, because Verve, uh, one of the other uh, companies that does streaming of Ruby early, um, Verve released a screenshot for a thumbnail of the next episode. Yeah. And it's Robin Hill's face, like, looking completely annoyed with someone's existence. Like, it's just her, like... It's like so basically me on a daily basis. Do you see what I deal with people? <laughs> Did I do anything right now to, to deserve that? Don't answer because you'll say yes. <laughs> Don't answer because you'll say yes. Like Just Max's say yes. Ear is like standing up. They can't see Max's ear. I I can though. So last talking point. <laughs> Jacques Watts. Jacques. 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 There's more than one. Jacques. Jacques. Watts and Whitley. Jacques. So clearly, Jacques knows Watts by their whole conversation, obviously. And people think Watts has been dead for 14 years. But Whitley, obviously, Whitley was, has a bad feeling. Yeah, he was oh, like, that's the first time. He touched him in his <laughs> while they were waiting. <laughs> yes, 
the bad touch, Daddy. Oh, I could touch me in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry for anyone out there who's ever experienced anything like that. She knows not what she says. Uncle Bird. He touched my baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Whitley, he's only like 14 or 15 years old, right? I'm sorry, you could all see that with Watts. I'm just saying. But he's only about 14 or 15 years old, right? That's about how old he looks. He's a little yeah. bit younger than Ruby, maybe. She's about. She's supposed to be about sixteen or seventeen now. Yeah. So. He wouldn't really know. Watts. He's like a dog. He's getting like a bad feeling. It's like gonna start barking at Watts. Wah, 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 wah. Get out of my house! But that's the first time we have not seen Whitley. Whitley's always like, "My dad is the right. I'm gonna be just like him and be the big businessman." He's always like pro, but then his dad shows up. He's all, you know, dad, what, oh, I should have to talk to his dad. And he's all kind of like. And his dad shows up. Watts is secretly his father. Maybe. <sighs> you haven't watched that movie yet. You don't get to make that reference. I've watched some of it. Some of Star Wars movies. You haven't watched and that one yet. That's when you get that. <laughs> God, why? Julie's just... That was gross. Anyway, let's wrap this up before we pass out. Um, Clearly, guys... Whitley has a bad feeling about Watts. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> why do you think I'm like this? Oh, uh, we can't do a video like this. We're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> can't we pause it? Oh, I could try. Hold on. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> We're in a bit of a war with this. That's why Julius is now half off the screen. Apparently his spot is soaked. But I wonder what, what touch, Hawaiian touch aloha spot. smells like. But touch it. It's soaked, bro. Uh, Clearly we why. watch way too much RT stuff. <laughs> I love RTAA. It's anyway. Great. Well, this is the second time we recorded it in this review, so yes. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, do we have any final thing to say about Jacques and uh, Watts and Whitley? I'm interested to see if Whitley does like turn against his dad because he doesn't trust Watts. I mean... That's possible. If he gets a bad feeling and then his dad aligns himself with him, what is he going to do? Is he just going to ignore his own feelings or is he going to do something about it? It's possible you can do that too, though. I'm just saying. Like. This could have been like a Glade commercial. <laughs> we were only paused for like five seconds. And we the weren't. dancing flowers came and rescued us We were all. paused for like two minutes. Whatever. Anyway, um, so... If we were actually paused. Final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully that actually worked. I don't know. This is the first time we're using this particular program to do this recording in this style. We've never paused it before. It's not the first time we've no, we're using paused it. it before. No, yeah, it is. We haven't paused it before. But we, haven't we haven't done it like this before with the whole ability to pull in the disclaimer in the middle of the episode. That's always going to have to do an after editing. But we're getting better. So, final thoughts on the episode. I still like the episode. Yeah, me too. I mean, yeah. a lot of it pissed me off because the characters pissed me off. But Ruby and Junior did not. I was surprised we didn't see Oscar. Like, why wasn't he at their, when they got their license? Like, <laughs> where the he, fuck did he hasn't go? even gone to school for it yet. No, but at least, I mean, he's their friend. Crow wasn't graduating and he was there. Yeah, but Crow was actually at the mission. Penny wasn't graduating and she was there. She can fly. She flew to herself. I'm just saying. So clearly they left Oscar back in Atlas. Yeah, so that's bogus as fuck. Maybe he was doing something with uh, Pietro or... This fucking little farmhand dude dropped everything and came to them with Ozpin in his head and was a yeah, fucking trooper say, about this shit. Him? 
Yeah, but he was a trooper yeah. about all this. They can't at least include him in their celebration of them getting their licenses. Can't the boy get some cake? Come on, man. He's Ruby been getting, ain't, he's been getting the short end look, of the stick over I know. everything now. Ruby ain't getting cookies. Oscar ain't getting no cake. There's an embargo on desserts. <laughs> okay, Julius, what were your feeling about the episode? Right? I feel like Oscar always gets the short end and the stick over everything. I like how Oscar wasn't in it, and we're, we're just feeling bad for Oscar. <laughs> I'm it's not. because he isn't. Why? You don't feel bad for him? You could no. be Oscar, you don't know. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> if you like this content, and. We actually stayed on topic for the I most know. part. And if you did or did not see a little uh, Glade fight, uh, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> uh, we definitely like to respond to comments. No one has a wet hat. I have a wet back. Yeah, so do I, jackass. You sprayed me when you sprayed him. I didn't mean to spray him. I just sprayed when his butt was leashing his notch Well, you gap. sprayed my butt, and my butt wasn't doing nothing. My butt was mine in its own damn business. Anyway, <laughs> don't forget to ring that bell. Like Max's um, butt. If you guys have any suggestions of things you want us to do in the future, uh, we do our best. I don't think people are going to like our uh, one reaction we did to what was someone requested, but we're going to post it anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. I fell asleep, like, twice. Yeah, people are probably getting defensive over that. Yeah. <laughs> well, people like what they like, mate. Who doesn't like that? subscribers? So anyway. Um, All 30. Ooh. We're up to 30, remember I told you? Yes. Don't we're gonna, losing us 30 subscribers. We're going to lose our 30 hard. subscribers. And be like, these people don't like has been hotel. Anyway. I was going to say the title of the name. Well, well anyway. That'll be coming eventually. Um, so, um, go ahead and we'll see you guys in our reaction. And then later on again in our next review. And then reaction, and then review, and then reaction, and then review. For however many episodes there happen to be of Ruby. Oh, God. Now she's doing it. I'm sorry. It was turkey day, guys. We're ending this now.